G'day everyone, welcome to Bushcraft and Camping Adventures. I'm back at Hookie's Hole and I'm out here to do a whole bunch of stuff today. We're going to build up our shelter even further, put more walls on and make that look like an actual structure. And tonight I'm going to tarp it up and I'm actually going to sleep in there. I've bought the tent in case that doesn't work, but the plan is to get a feel for number one, what the floor is like, is the floor functional, and just for something different. But I'm gonna clay in the stone circle, the fire pit. I bought some clay that I picked out of a riverbed, a creek bed, I should say, on the farm, on our farm that we have, and it's been sitting in my house for two years and I haven't used it. So I've bought it in, I've bought some water, and I'm gonna clay that in and make that a little more permanent because rebooting it every time, it's a redundant process. So that's something to look forward to. This should be a really fun episode. Hold on tight, here we go. Okay, so that's the first pass completed. Um, I don't have much clay left. It's it's done enough to get the base in, but I'm not sure if it's going to do enough to get any height on it. I'm going to try and put a rock either side of this middle middle piece, uh, clay that in, and then probably call it a day because we'll be out of clay. So let's get on to that. Um, I'm liking how it's looking though. I made it a little bit wonky, which is frustrating, but I'm not going to go back and rebuild the whole thing now. It's, it adds character. It's actually not looking too bad. It is wonky and that does bother me. It is a bit wonky and that does bother me, but it's not terrible. All right, I put some final touches on and we'll start baking it. It's not going too bad. So that's definitely a fire pit. So it's been one of my missions to cement that fireplace in for quite a while now. I knew it wouldn't be a big job, but it's just a matter of getting round to it. It's done now. 
Now you're going to see a lot of better fire pits, but this is my fire pit. And there's a couple of leeches baked in to that clay there to remind them to leave me alone. You may notice an addition to my seat. The thing that has constantly plagued me from day one is these feet digging into the dirt and sinking a good couple of inches. It's been driving me nuts. So this little knick-knack ground sheet is going to stop my feet from sinking into the ground. Much, much appreciated, much, much needed. Very nice, very nice. So this will look aesthetic and it'll also make sure that any vines that want to block the entrance way there bug it off up into the sky. Genius. Alrighty, well, I've got it done. There we go. Looks okay. I'm um, a little bit wobbly. I'm not going to lie, it's not the most perfect thing I've ever done, but um, I like it. It gives the effect that you want. It looks pretty cool. As far as a survival shelter goes, it's about a 4 out of 10. <laughs> not going to survive much, not going to keep air mosquitoes or rain out. But, you know, it's just cool, I guess, right? Just a fun thing to do. I'm having a good day today. Absolutely nothing, but it's just funny. All right, I'm going to challenge myself here. I've got here little leftover dregs of char cloth and a little bit of lint from the washing machine. It's like the last dregs. It's barely a thumb's worth. So I'm going to try and spark onto that and then get that sparky ember into that bird's nest and see what we can do. We hit it. We got a hit. Okay, this should be easy. Get that in there. All right. So not bad for a first fire, for the new fireplace, the new partially completed clay fireplace. 
if everything holds, then I won't put any more clay on, but uh, I got a feeling it'll need some work as time goes on, so we'll see how we go. Huh. <sighs> what a nice moment, huh? The breeze has kicked in and it's very, very nice. It's exactly what we needed, actually. Uh, since the fire's gone on, the moz has gone away, the breeze has kicked up, the moz has gone away a little bit more. I like that back there. I'm very, uh, I don't know, I don't think I bought my mosquito net tonight. And with it being heavily funnel web season, I kind of am nervous about sleeping without it on. Just for that last barrier of defence, you know. It's kind of stressing me out because I know this area has heaps of funnel webs. Has everything here. Tell you something that's been irritating me lately when I watch other bushcraft channels on YouTube. I don't know if I'm, I'm probably I'm probably the only one that this irritates because that's very me to be the only one that notices something irrelevant. Um, I really hate the whole bushcraft YouTube culture now, and a lot of people that I like and enjoy watching do this, so it's not like a deal breaker. Just one of those things that's really irritating me is the brand name dropping. I hate it. I know why it originated, because if you're going to become a popular YouTuber, I wouldn't understand what that feels like yet, then you're going to want to say the name of the brand you're using and this and that so you don't have to answer the question 58,000 times in the comments. I get why they do it. I get why everyone does it. And it's best practice to do it. But I hate it. I can't say, oh, I've got a, I've got a this, that, this, and a that, 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 and this is a Series X555, five, 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 that, this, that. It annoys me annoys me I don't know what it is I don't care about the brand if someone wants a recommendation I'll make a recommendation but otherwise I couldn't give a rats about the brand just get the thing put it on that's it don't think about it anymore the job's done this and that has done its job I should just rename this channel to old man yells at clouds wild camping adventures I am an old man. I'm turning 42 soon. How crazy is that? 42 with three kids. What a trip. What an absolute trip. Check this out. It's in a Gatorade bottle, but it's just Waterford's mineral water, right? Tastes great. It's been in the freezer all night, so there's chunks of ice in there a moment ago. It's really good. And once you're finished, it makes a good... Um, you know, you got to go, you got to go. Toilet. Okay, so I just walked over here to get something from my bag and in there, somewhere, I'm fairly certain, I saw a brown snake. Could be wrong, I'm no snake expert, there was definitely something there, there was something scurrying away back into the dense foliage there, 100%, there's no doubt something's in there, it could be a lizard, it could be a snake. I'm not sure, but what I do know is that I don't know if I want to sleep here right now. I mean, that's right there. I think that would be a little bit foolish. I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was a brown snake. So for now, I'm moving my stuff over there with the intention to put the tent right there. But we'll see what happens. I don't want to mess with a brown snake. Because that would just be foolish. So we'll just back away from the habitat. I don't know what this means for the shelter. Let's just move forward.
Have a look at this. Alright. So that's your black cockatoo. Stripping a tree to get the grubs inside. Often they strip it so hard, they break the tree and the tree falls over. But, in recent times, aka today, I noticed this. The tree is coming back to life. And it makes me think. And if you go all the way to the top, you can't really see it. But the tree has fully blossomed. Now my thought is I often think that black cockatoos are merely going for the grubs when they hack into a tree like this. But what if the black cockatoos are actually actively trying to help the tree? So they know that the tree has borer or some kind of uh, threatening bug in it. So they come in, they remove the invader. They remove the evasive species through this kind of through this kind of action, and then they fly away, leaving the tree to recover. If they know the tree is too far gone, perhaps that's when they snap the tree to kind of like put the tree out of its misery. I wonder. I like that idea that they're kind of like tree doctors. They come in and they either save a tree or they put it down. There's your ponderance for the day.